if you're looking for a review on a used Kawasaki ZZR 1400, then um, stick around, it's coming up. Well, hello, welcome back to my vlog. Um, today I'm going to be doing a review on this Kawasaki ZZR 1400. Uh, this particular model is the um, Performance Edition. Um, the difference is with the Performance Edition was basically the, uh, the colouring was a little bit different, so you had the grey with the green stripes. Um, it came with an Akapovic exhaust system. Um, also come with a dark screen with the holes in it which um, help the pressure behind the screen. Apparently. Uh, this particular bike is actually mine. I've had it from you, so I've had it seven years now. It's a 2013 model. Um, so basically it's a review on what it's like to live with. Now I, um, I use this every day pretty much for work. Right, so the specs of the bike are obviously the 1400cc engine, which is actually a 1441cc engine. Um, they increased the stroke by 4mm from the previous model, which is what gave you the extra 41. Well, it weighs um, 265 kilograms, so it's a bit weighty, um, but you don't really notice that. It's so well balanced, um, you don't notice the weight. It will do 186 miles an hour on a standard bike wheel. Um, there are ways of playing with that, obviously, to remove it. Um, it's 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds, 0 to 100 in 4.8 seconds, uh, do a quarter mile in under 10 seconds and hit around 150 miles an hour. Uh, fuel capacity is 21.9 litres or 5.8 US gallons. I always run this on um, super run leaded. They run so much better. Um, it removes any knocking noises and you get better fuel economy out of it. Um, so I get <laughs> not great fuel economy. I get around 40 to the gallon. On the trip computer it says 40 to the gallon, so um, I'm getting exactly 40 to the gallon. Um, so it comes with two power modes, uh, full power and low power. I don't know why. <laughs> You've got a, a low power mode that gives you around, it gives you between 75 and 80 percent of the maximum power. Uh, to be honest, it's pointless. I mean, why would you buy a 200 brake horsepower motorcycle and then put it in low power mode and restrict yourself to 75% of the power? Just control the power on your right wrist. <laughs> well, talking of fuel, <laughs> I ain't got none. Um, <laughs> range of 20 miles I call it, if you believe it. Um, so, um, yeah, fuel time.
Why do most of these garages only have one high octane pump, super unleaded at one pump? Crazy. And I don't think this boat's even got fuel. Well, I know these are a, a big touring bike, really. You no, know, they call them a hyper bike, but they are a big tourer. Uh, with sports bike performance uh, but it's still no fun really running around on the on the dual carriageways so <laughs> you always want to look to get back on the back roads because um, it's surprising as I say this does weigh 265 kilos that's a wet weight um, but they're surprisingly nimble on the through the corners Great fun really, great fun bike ride. Uh, we'll get it off of here. Hit some bendy bits. Right, the tyres on this bike are um, a 190 rear, 120 front. If I run Pirelli GT Angel 2s, um, they're so much better than the standard Bridgestones that come with a bike. I found the Bridgestones, it was um, the 023s that were on here. Uh, they were so hard, they, <laughs> they took forever to warm up. Um, from you, I reckon you wanted a good 150 miles to run them in. Um, well, these these pretties, they they seem pretty much good right from the word go, you know. Give them 75 miles, probably 50, 50, 75 miles, and they're, they're good to go, you know. They're giving you optimum grip already. Um, the wear weight on them is really good. I've, I've done about 5,000 miles on them now. And um, with the bridge stones, I'd already been looking to replace them, but these ones have been, have been brilliant. They've got fuck much left in them. Um, also on this particular bike I've got tail tidy, um, quick shifter, um, some crash protection, uh, front fork crash protection, um, side crash bungs, um, RG bar ends, I've also put an extension on the front fender um, and that's because it's so short and the radiator sits right behind it the chances of getting stuff through your radiator are quite high so I stuck that on there you, you can of course get some radiator protectors RNG do one but these bikes run quite hot I mean, this is 87 degrees at the moment for engine temperature if you start covering up your radiator that's just going to get hotter and hotter and um, they run better in the, when, it, when it's cool, you know, and on a cold, a coldish day, these engines run sweet as a nut, um, it's lovely. I'm so saying the handling of this, these bikes, considering the weight, is absolutely brilliant. I mean, they're not your, your nibble 600. Um, but they're pretty damn good for uh, for what is actually a sports tour. You know they're brilliant on the road for that. So you can stick your luggage on it. You can get your panniers on it, your back box on it. Get the wife on the back. Put your tent on the back. Whatever you want, and you can go wherever you want on one of these. Um, the engines are so torquey. Um, you know you haven't got to keep changing down to go anywhere. They'll just they'll just pick up and go um, I'll try and show you that so we're now in top gear I'll just drop this down to about 50 mile an hour there you go 50 mile an hour top gear I want to overtake this van just go you know you don't have to drop gears on them 
um, I'd always recommend being in the right gear at the right speed at the right time so you know it, it gives you better traction through the corners if you are in the right gear obviously but you know, if you're <laughs> pooling on the dual carriageway someone steps out in front of you which um, let's face it happens a lot as soon as they're out of the way again you're just off you know you don't have to change down or nothing With these Akapovics, the bike sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, I strongly recommend the extra money. I mean, I can't actually remember, but at the time when, when I got this, you know, it was an extra thousand pound on the standard price for the bike um, to add to, you know, for the performance edition, um, which came with them exhaust. And to buy them separately, it's like 1800 quid so <laughs> it's a bargain every day of the week yeah I've been told it's slightly different now I think um, it's just over 2000 pound they add to it now for the performance edition I'm not sure what you get with the new bikes for that uh, the difference between the new bikes and these bikes is just um, fully adjustable rolling suspension <laughs> I don't know about you, but how often do you adjust your suspension? You know, if you were taking this on a different track every day of the week, I could understand that, but it's not really that sort of bike. Um, are you going to adjust it because someone's jumped on the back? I mean, how many of you adjust your tyre pressures when someone jumps on the back? <laughs> Very unlikely. I mean, the suspension on this bike is adjustable. So you just go along to a specialist, have the bike set up for your weight, and you don't, you know, you, <laughs> you don't need to adjust the suspension every day, you know, you don't get over your infill bike right, I'll just lift that up 5mm, you ain't gonna notice that. <laughs> um, I mean, how often do you check your tyre pressures? The biggest difference you'll make is having the correct tyre pressures in your bike. I, um, I left work one, one day on this, one morning, and I got to the first roundabout, I went roundabout and thought, oh that don't feel right now. That, <laughs> that feels awful. So I got to the stops and I found a, a screw in my tyre. I mean the tyre wasn't flat, it hadn't gone down, but it had dropped a few PSI and I noticed it straight away. I was a bit gay because the tyre had only done 800 miles. <laughs> yeah, one of them things. Isn't it? Just noticed it's actually 27 degrees today. Um, and the bike is, like I say, it does run hot. It is 93 degrees engine temperature now. Um, <laughs> it's running really hot. So, and actually that's one of the good things about these bikes as well, the fins on the side of these bikes are designed to take that temperature away from the rider, and it, and it works, you know, I mean I can feel it's a hot day, I'm in full levers as always, um, but I cannot feel any temperature coming up from the engine, I'm not sat on something that's now 94 degrees C. So when I went to edit the video I noticed at some point the microphone had um, fallen out the bottom and uh, the foam had fell off the end so you couldn't hear a thing I was saying some people might think that's a good thing but there you go um, so I've come back out to <laughs> redo the lost bits Some drivers that they get to a roundabout and only got to give away to the right. But if there's nothing to give way to, they're waiting till there is. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd better mention the traction control on these bikes. Um, it's got the Kawasaki traction control system. 
So you've got uh, four stages of traction control. And that's off, one, two and three. I personally tend to ride with it on off or one, um, depending on road conditions and whatever. Um, if I've got new tyres on, I might stick that up a little bit. But most of the time it'll be off or one. It does make a huge difference to the control of the bike as well, you know. It, it seems to accelerate so much better with it in either off or one. You stick it in three and it, you do feel it sort of holding the bike back all the time. Um, I've done a, a whole video on the bike controls and how to, how to go through them and adjust them, so um, I'll leave a link to that at the top. Hopefully. I'll also leave a link in the description for all the bits I've added to the bike, so the R and G bits and, um, and whatever. If anyone's interested in, in getting any of them. Uh, we just took the other things we've got on the dash. On the trip computer, you've got outside temperature current miles per gallon, average miles per gallon, range, um, battery voltage, which um, that's quite low on one something, uh, and that's it. So another thing you've got on, on the ZZR is a um, change up light that's adjustable. Um, again there's more detail of that in the video on, on how to adjust the dashboard and the dots and stuff. Um, but basically you set it at whatever revs you choose um, and an orange light will come on the dash when it's time to change up. I, I found it purely by mistake to be honest. And I've, I've got mine set at I think 7,500 revs. But actually it is really handy, you know, especially with a quick shift on them on here because you just hold the throttle open um, and you do actually sort of in the bottom of your eye catch a little glimpse of the orange light come on and it does tell you to change the <laughs> it sounds like such a, <laughs> a simple thing to do I mean why would you forget but um, I find it quite handy I think you can change it so you can have orange and then that turns to red uh, and, and all sorts of bits and pieces but as I say that's um, more detailed of that in the video which um, there should be a link at the top of the screen for it. As I say we've just looked at the pros and cons of the bike then so uh, we'll go to the cons first I think because they do get hot they do overheat um, and as I say I think if you added a radiator protector that would actually make that worse but the fans are pretty good once they do start getting hot the fan kicks in so there's nothing to worry about um, just keep an eye on it uh, the weight when manoeuvring at slow speeds can be a, a bit of an issue, although once you get used to it, not really an issue again, not the same. Um, not a fan of the standard tyres, but you can soon change them. Um, so the pros, well there's, there's, <laughs> there's a low, big list of pros. Um, you know, it, the performance of the bike is brilliant. You know, it, it'll outperform most things on the road. Um, so it, it's good at everything. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty nimble around the back roads. Um, it will sit on a motorway and dual carriageway all day long um, with all your luggage and your wife on the back. So if you want to go touring, brilliant. You can take it on track. Um, it's just a brilliant all-round bike, really. Well, the only problem is they're going to stop making this bike. <laughs> so if you want one, you're going to have to be quick at getting one. And, and they're replacing it with um, SX, so 1000cc supercharger. Um, seems to be the way they're going. So hopefully next weekend, I'm booked up to go and have a little test on the um, SX H2. Um, we might as 
we're going for a good one. And um, I'm going to compare it to the, the new ZZR as well. So um, I'll, I'll ride them back to back and get a proper comparison between the two. You know, see if there's any advantages to the 1000 cc supercharger over the over the you know the 1400. So that'll be next weekend. Seeing as I've <laughs> I've now got some free time next weekend because the um, spectators can no longer go to the British Superbikes, which is where I should have been next weekend. Um, and on that, you know, they're not letting us go to any elite sports, and they're now including. BSB in that, um, but you can still go to club racing. So, if anyone's got any any tips on which club races to go to, please let me know. You know, I'd love to go along and just to see some racing. That'd be really nice. So, please let me know. Right. So that's um. That's it on this review of the Kawasaki ZR 1400. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you do, please um, give us a, a thumbs up and subscribe. And um, I'm sure that will let you know of any up and coming videos. Keep an eye out for next weekend for that review on the two bikes. That should go on um, next Monday. Um, what will that be? At the 10th, <laughs> oh yeah, 10th of August maybe, that should go up, um, but thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you again soon, thanks so much.